In this lesson, I want to read out the speed of my uh, jellyfish body and use this value to drive uh, a deformer. So uh, let's make the brain part visible. Um, again, I know this is not the brain of the jellyfish, but I uh, didn't know how to call it. So this is our brain right now. And yeah, I want to read out the velocity of this part here, of the body, to drive a deformer, which deforms the brain. So let's first of all create the deformer. We will use the squash and stretch deformer. Close it. And make this one a child of the brain null object. So it affects everything which is in this null. And let's take a look from the side view. So first of all, we need to rotate our deformer for 180 degrees and move it upwards just at the top of our brain part. Click on the deformer and adjust the values. So the bottom should be at zero. That this purple line, which you see up here, is just at the top of our object. And the top value should be right here at the end of our object. In our case, 16 centimeters. And if we now change this factor of value, you see that it stretches out really nice. And this is basically what I want. So if my body moves, moves very fast, this brain part should be stretched out. And if, it, if it's slow, it should, be look, it should look like this. 200. So let's open up Expresso. And this seems to be an easy task. So we just bring in our jellyfish. Create an output port for position velocity. And we will check the velocity with the result node. So this is another cool function of Expresso because um, the velocity is always a vector. Uh, imagine you have an object which moves uh, through 3D space and the velocity vector is an arrow which points at the position where the object will be in the next frame. So this basically um, yeah, is an arrow which is uh, longer when the object moves very fast and it's very short when the object is slow. So what we basically need is the length of this velocity vector. And if we have our result node and we don't change the data type to vector but leave it on real, um, the autocorrection of Expresso will give us the length of this vector. So this is just something you need to know. And now make sure animation refresh is activated, that we have a real-time refresh. If I now hit play, you will see that we have a problem. I hit play, it moves, and the result shows zero. So this is uh, something in cinema which we call priorities, because the movement of our jellyfish is actually calculated here in this part. So we don't have any um, keyframes on the jellyfish which move it, and the whole animation of the jellyfish is generated here. And this is why Expresso can't read out the um, velocity, because this whole thing here is uh, calculated at once and Expresso doesn't know in this setup that the jellyfish is actually moving because it has no keyframes. So we have to fix this. I'll close it. Um, and yeah, if we click on this Expresso tag, we see something down here which is called priority. And if we open up this list, you'll see in which order Cinema calculates stuff. So there are initial calculations, then the animations, Expressions, dynamics, and the generators at the end. Uh, Expresso is by default set to expression. And if you have several Expresso setups and you need to define which one is calculated when, you can use these numbers here. So um, you can type in, maybe if you have two Expresso setups and one is at zero and the other one is set to 10 or something, um, he will calculate the one with the zero first and the other one later. Um, in our case, it should be enough just to generate a second Expresso tag. So I will do this. So now we have two tags. They are both uh, set to the same priority, but uh, we just split it up and this should work. So we will go into the new Expresso tag, which is empty. If I double click the other one, you can see the uh, setup is still here. So I'll go into an empty one. I'll take the jellyfish. Create an output port, position velocity, take again our result node, connect it, and hit play. And now you can see that uh, we get actual values, so we can work with this one. 
And if we take a close look, it looks like the maximum number is something about 35. So we know how we need to set up our range mapper. I will leave it here, the result. And we generate a range mapper node. And connect this one. Sorry, I didn't want to unplug this. And now we want our range mapper to drive the um, the deformer. So we will go back to a perspective view maybe and take a look from the side. And just uh, as a helper create a camera and make this camera a child of the master controller. If we now look through the camera and hit play, uh, the camera moves with the jellyfish and we can see the uh, movement in a close-up. Now we need to define how uh, much we want to change the factor of our deformer, so how it should look like when the um, the brain part is stretched out. So I will pause here and check it out. I'll take the factor. We start at 100% and stretch it out and maybe something like this could be cool. 150%. So this should be our maximum. So I'll take the range mapper. Um, we'll set the input range to user defined. So our range mapper expects, a, take a look down here, expects a real and we put in a vector and the auto correction of Expresso will calculate the length of the vector. And we set the, the maximum speed right now is something about 35, but I will set it to 50 so that we have a, a bit more, yeah, that we can move a bit faster later. And the output range should be percent because our um, the factor that we want to drive is in percent. And the lowest should be 100 and the upper limit should be 150. So let's bring in our deformer and connect this one to the deformer. Object properties, let me bring this one up here. Object properties, factor. So let's rewind and hit play. Yeah, this is cool. So now you can see that our the brain part is reacting to the movement of our jellyfish. So what I now would like to do is something like a delay because it reacts, actually it reacts too early. There should be something like a drag so that we can feel the mass of this. <coughs> so that we can feel the mass of this inner part. And in earlier lesson we learned how we can do this very easy. We'll just um, create a memory node. And put the memory in between here. The input and the output. Clean our setup to something like this. And maybe we store about 10 frames and use a delay of maybe 5 frames. Yeah, so now the length of our vector is stored for um, 10 frames. And right now I want a delay of 5 frames. If I now hit play, this looks really cool. So it pushes and after five frames the inner part reacts. You can decrease it to one so it's a very um, little delay but you can also set it to nine and use nine frames but this seems to be too long. I think we're good with five. Yeah this is cool. So in this lesson you learned how uh, we can read out the speed of our um, body object and you learn uh, why we need priorities and uh, how we can fix stuff if you just split it up to two setups. And um, yeah, we used our little trick with the memory node to create a custom delay. And in the next lesson we will create a few more cool effects, use uh, some materials and also delays to change the color of this inner part.